Morning, YouTubers. <laughs> so I got an interesting video, at least a thought to do today, and that's uh, checking to see if there's penetration differences based on rod angle. So I believe the theory is, is that when you go straight in like this or, you know, slight drag angle, that it's going to push the molten metal further into the plate or melt more, uh, better penetration than if you have, like, say, an extreme drag angle. So I figure, well, rather than just reading a book that tells us the answer, why don't we actually test it and see hands-on what the difference is? So I got a bunch of eighth inch 7018 ESOB prime rods. I'm gonna run them at uh, 120 amps and I'll cool the plate between passes so everything's real nice and consistent and we'll cut it in half and then etch it and see what's up, I guess. Well, I welded this sucker from everything from pretty much straight up and down all the way to where <laughs> this last weld, I literally ran it about like that. Probably even more. Hopefully you saw that in the video. Let's take a look at what we got. <laughs> that one's pretty much perfectly straight. It's kind of funny. Let's look at the side profile. First beat, I couldn't really see where I was going a little bit rough there, but I would say as the angle came down, I seemed to deposit more metal this well. The last three seemed to be wider than the first three by a little bit. The travel speed, I would say, was overall pretty average across the board with them. But if I were to lay these down just like this, I mean, there's no real, too, I guess, too huge of an indication that the rod angle was that extreme. So it'll be very interesting to see what the penetration looks like. So let me go and cut this in half and etch it and then come back and let's talk about what I find. Well, if the proof is in the pudding, here's your pudding. This is an overview shot, probably not the easiest to see. But already we can see that the results are kind of interesting. Not exactly what I expected, at least. I would say that across the board, they're pretty close to one another. On the extreme, so straight up and down and flat, have less penetration. But pretty much everything in between looks very similar. So let's look at it in more detail. So here's one, two, three, and four one being the most up and down. You can see that the profile of two, three, and four are all basically the same. Now one has less penetration, but that could be because the plate was cold and every one, uh, every pass after that was a little bit hotter than the first. Here's five, six, seven, and eight. The penetration dropped off with seven and eight a little bit, you can tell. But five and six are pretty much the same as the ones before them. I mean, I guess I got to say the difference isn't as much as I would have suspected. Here's all of them together. Besides one and eight, the first and last with the most extreme angles, they're all very similar. 
I generally will keep my rod angle at about three, four, or five, and those all are basically the same. Now, if I cut and etched a different part of the plate, maybe the results would be a little bit different, but I gotta say that they're closer to one another than I would have suspected. Pretty interesting. So that was quite interesting. Here we go, got this one that's cut and etched. The penetration profile of them, very close to one another, much more than I would have suspected. The beads all look fairly close to one another with the outliers being straight up and down and basically horizontal or perfectly flat. I kind of have a theory as to why this might be the case. When you look at the rod tip, if I can get this to focus, there we go. When you angle it at the extreme, all that ends up happening is the arc ends up stabilizing and going between the plate and the rod at the tip, even at this angle. Well, you're using the flux as essentially a standoff distance for the arc gap, and it's about you know a sixteenth to an eighth inch, so a pretty tight arc. So even running it sideways like this, and with the weld humping up in front of this, you're essentially still maintaining an arc gap. So it, I guess it's not too surprising it's still welded with, with running the rod like this. One thing you probably didn't see in the video because it was fast forwarded and I didn't mention, the last probably two if not three, I seem to get arc blow at the end of the weld and you don't really see any spatter on this indicating it, but the arc seemed to be pretty difficult to control with a more extreme angle, which isn't too surprising. So realistically, I would say you want to stay in more or less the middle area where you're about lean back to about maybe this far. When you start going below this, you're just going to have a difficult time controlling it especially with 7018. I do find with 6013 rods on like a fillet, it's pretty common for me to have a fairly steep angle like this. And that's simply to try and use the arc force to push the slag behind uh, the, the weld pool. Because if you, with 6013, if you run like this, especially on a fillet weld, that flux is gonna run off in front of this here. And then you're just gonna get slag inclusions. 7018 is far more forgiving, and I think 6010 is also going to have different results in this. I'll have to try it with 6010 in the future because I think that's going to be the one where you could probably see more penetration coming straight in than you would with an angle like this, and that's simply because it doesn't have very much flux, and the flux does not really run in front of the rod, so you could really drive it in doing that. But that's something for another video. So yeah, tell me what your thoughts are. Were you surprised? Did you expect this result? I know I didn't, but feel free to leave me a comment or question, concern, whatever in the comment box. Otherwise, I appreciate you sticking around. Until next time.